Yo, what's up guys? Today I'm going to be teaching you about how to defeat each class in a 1v1 scenario, whether that be World PvP, Battlegrounds, or Dueling Tournaments. I got a couple of tips that affects all encounters, so let's start with those. When you go on the offensive, switching into the Sanctity Aura can be really useful to give that 10% extra damage on your Judgment and if you get a Seal of Command proc. Sanctity Aura is not an aura you want to be sitting in all the time as you only really go on the offense when you have your stun up and if you're sitting in Sanctity Aura all the time then you're wasting valuable time spent in other, other auras like Frost Resistance Aura, Shadow Resistance Aura and Fire Resistance Aura. Uh, those are your biggest auras. Those are the ones you want to be in most of the time. Sanctity Aura is only really there for when you go on the offense. I see a lot of Red Paladins using Sanctity Aura 100% of the time. This is what you should be doing. You want to be juggling up a little bit, getting all of your steals, getting all your auras in there, sorry. Uh, my second tip is bubbling before incoming damage and not after incoming damage. Now, for example, if you see a warrior pop all of his cooldowns, you're going to want to pop your bubble as he mortal strikes to you. So you t take that counter strike and make yourself immune to it. It wastes his big damage. It wastes his cooldown time, but it also keeps you at high health and enough health to stay offensive and smack him. Yes, you do get a 100% swing time increase in bubble, but it doesn't really matter because you, you can do whatever you want for 12 seconds. If, however, you ate his cooldowns and didn't bubble, you're now 20% health, you now need to bubble. You're gonna have to start bandaging up, healing up in the bubble, spending about 12 seconds healing back up they're going to do the same. They're going to reset. They're going to run off, get a bandage, and get a recharge. You don't want that to happen. You want to bubble early. Force all of it. Once they've used their cooldowns, bubble. You waste their cooldowns. You're still at full health. You can still hit them. That bubble comes off. Their damage is gone. And you're back to an even fight. But yes, you have no bubble. But yes, you're at full health. And they're not. They didn't get to reset. And you've got a minor reset. That's a worth bubble. My third one is Repentance Reset Swing Timer. Now this is really big. Uh, once you re Repentance someone, no matter how long ago was your last swing, you've reset it. If you have a four second swing timer and you've just swung two seconds ago, you now have to wait four seconds until you can swing again. So what you shouldn't do is Repentance someone, judge them for the 100% increased damage on the in cap, and then wait four seconds to hit them. You want to judge, you want to, sorry, you want to Repentance them, wait four seconds, then judgment them, and then slap them immediately afterwards. This gives you, this gives them less time to react to the four second swing timer or four, an extra four seconds in CC for them to do absolutely nothing. You negate anything they do for four seconds, which is insane. If you do it the other way around, you've literally hit them and now you have to wait four seconds to hit them again and you've kind of wasted it on a lot of potential damage they can now start healing and whatnot you don't want that uh, so let's get right into it guys uh, these are my class specific 1v1 tips so let's start with priests you want to be using shadow aura to resist all their shadow spells like psychic scream which is their fear mana burn that will eat your mana and shadow web pain now priests have an offensive to spell so there will be the spelling your buffs so you make sure you're using rank one buffs to debate them into taking your rank one buffs instead of your rank fives, which costs you no mana and costs them a lot of mana. So if you keep putting up buffs, they may just keep spelling them until they realize that you're using lower ranks. Then you can start using rank five again. Uh, you wanna be using seal of wisdom because they will be mana burning you. And you'll be losing a lot of mana. If you seal of wisdom and judge them, every time you hit them, they will give you mana back. Uh, and if you seal of command, it will double dip and give you two lots of mana every time you swing. So you will be gaining mana every time you swing, effectively. Um, which is which is great, because they will be mana burning you. Mana burning will take all of your mana. This will give you just enough to get a hodge off, another seal of command, or another judgment. Uh, they will try and dispel it, but it will cost them more than it will for you to reapply it. So it's a very long game of back and forward, I couldn't tell you who won this matchup. It could be it could go either way. It could be gear dependent. It could be resistance dependent. Um, hopefully you resist their fears. If you don't, you might be in, in shit. If you do, they might be in shit. It's really back and forward. Um, so especially if they're like a disc priest, they're gonna have a high mana pool. Seal of Wisdom is really gonna help you uh, keep your mana up 
keep keep yourself up. It will be a long game. You won't get that much damage off because Seal of Wisdom does zero damage when you judge it. So it will be a quite a long game, back and forward, back and forward, but you will most likely win this matchup. Warriors. Warriors do a ton of damage, so you're probably going to want to be in Devotion Aura for that extra armor. Uh, warriors will always try and hamstring cut you. If they hamstring cut you, it's so that they can get swings off without you getting swings off, but also it gives them another chance to get distance and charge you again, uh, which gives them an extra stun and whatnot, more rage. So you don't want them to do that. You want to keep freedom up so you don't get kited and you don't let them get far enough to charge you and stun you. So you want to keep a melee range as long as possible. Another really big tip is Berserker Rage breaks in caps, including your Repentance. So don't use Repentance before or during their use of Berserker Rage because it will make them immune to it and it will take them out of it like a trinket, uh, which obviously you, you don't want to do. If they Berserker Rage and they're going ham, you probably want to use Blessing of Protection there. Uh, and, and stay close to them, don't let them bandage. Uh, don't let them get another charge off or whatnot. Stay close to them. Uh, that's really it for warriors. Warriors don't have too much. Just don't let them kite you. Uh, otherwise, they'll get that charge and they'll they'll get to control the fight. You want to control the fight against the warrior. Possibly my favorite matchup for a defensive class like Paladin is Rogue. Against Rogue, you want to be using a sword and board, which is sword and shield with a shield spike. Shield spikes can do 20 to 30 damage. This is four room shield spike every time you block. Plus that with Red Aura, you're doing, say, let's say top is 50 damage every time a rogue hits you and you block, or 20 damage every time they hit you, which adds up over time. If you have a really small health pool, probably just sit in Diva Aura. But yeah, Sword and Shield, Shield Spike, Red Aura, they're going to slowly teeth themselves down. Uh, and finally, when you can get out of the CC, you want to use Hodge, Sanctity Aura and one shot them. Rogues at the moment are really squishy, but they pack a punch, so you don't want to be swapping off your sword and, sword and shield until you go on offense. Another great thing is Readout. Readout is a talent in the protection tree, which you should have as a rep pardon. Readout gives you a 30% chance after, after being victim to a critical strike to give you 30% block chance for 10 seconds or five blocks. This is insane against rogues because rogues hit you so fast. Um, if they kidney you, that is a 30% chance to block their kidney. That is huge. If you block a kidney, you are out of CC for the next couple of seconds. They might toss a blind at you then. That's another cooldown they've wasted. If you're a dwarf, you can get out the blind with your stone form and then they have to vanish. You've just wasted three cooldowns of theirs. They have to immediately open or you're gonna heal back up. It's a really grimy fight for rogues. You'll definitely come out on top as a Red Paladin, uh, especially if you've got that sword and board, especially if you're a Dwarf. Um, I cannot, you guys, if you're, if you're PvPing as Paladin and you're not playing Dwarf, then you're doing it wrong. Mages. Now, I like this fight because it's all about mind games. You want to be really aggressive against mages, especially mages with low health pools. Mages in uh, PvE gear, so which is player versus environment gear, they're probably gonna have a lot of damage, but no health at all. So uh, you, you're gonna nuke these guys, but, the, but you have to close distance first. Now the way you close distance is by freedom. Usually they'll be using frost bolts because they're PVE spec uh, at the moment. So, if, but if they are fire spec or elemental spec, use fire resistance aura, but most of the time frost resistance, frost resistance aura. Now freedom, they can't dispel it. So for 10 seconds or 16 seconds, if you have Guardian's Favor, which you should do if you're PvP spec, you'll be able to run them uh, at increased speed with Pursuit of Justice and just walk at them while they cast on you. Uh, now, the mage will get pretty anxious because you're closing distance, whereas warriors can't. Uh, they will treat you like a warrior. The second you get close, they will blink. Uh, it, it, unless they're very, really good players, they're imp usually they're impatient, you get close, you slap them, they'll frost over and they'll blink. You free them, you rep them. Now they cannot get out of your stun. If you stun before the blink, you've wasted your stun. But if you wait for the blink and then you stun them, that is your chance to burst them down and kill them. The second that they blink, you should be grinning. 
because that's when you know you can kill a mage. It's all about mind games. Has he blinked? Is his blink on cooldown? If not, stun him. If it is off cooldown, then you should not be stunning a mage because they'll just blink, you've wasted it. It's a minute cooldown or a 45 second cooldown if you talented into it. Warlock, probably the hardest fight in phase one right now. Fear doesn't really break unless they're casting a hard cast on you, like Shadow Bolt or a Merliate Tick can do it, that the first initial hit of a Merliate can take you out. But apart from that, Agony doesn't, uh, Corruption doesn't, it really sucks. Um, they're very tanky as well, especially if they're SL lock with um, Void Walkers out. So my tips against Warlock would be to spell their dots, their Merliate you can spell, their Corruption you can dispel. You can't spell Agony, that's a curse. Possibly kill their pet. Now, if they've got Void Walker, you're probably not going to be able to because of its health pool. But you can Exorcism Demons. Now, Exorcism does cost a lot of mana, but it does do a lot of damage. Use that if they've got a Imp, Succubus, or Fell Hunter. Two Exorcisms, which is 15 seconds because obviously you use it once, 15 seconds again, you can use it again. 15 seconds. And if you get an auto attack, you probably kill all of those pets. M's probably just two exorcisms and they're dead. The rest is two exorcisms and a slap. Um, so that's a good way of killing, getting rid of SL Lock's pets. Uh, you can't fear them with um, Turn Undead, but you can Holy Wrath. I don't really think you should, as it costs like 800 mana and it's got a cast time, which kind of sucks. But yeah, just exorcism swing, exorcism kills the pet does put you out a little bit of trouble but you're still in deep water because you're against the warlock and they will fear you until you just run out of a dual area or you're in narnia um but yeah the spell shadow war all the time unless they're conflag you may want to set fire resist and resist that conflag um always take off the emoliate before they try and conflag because you might be able to do it if you're lucky um but that's it for warlocks Hunters, a tedious fight. You want to be using Frost Aura here, or maybe even Diva Aura, but usually I would use Frost Aura. Now, the reason for Frost Aura is you can resist Frost Trap, or Freezing Trap, sorry. Freezing Trap is the trap that put, freezes you in place for eight seconds, and the Hunter will then gain distance and aim shot you for a ton of damage. You have a chance of resisting that Freezing Trap with your Frost Aura. So if you know the Feign Deft, switch into Frost Aura from Devo. Um, and then hope to resist that CC. Uh, dispel the poisons. Now they have two poisons that probably use on you, which is uh, Viper Sting um, and Serpent Sting. Serpent Sting is damage, just to spell it, you, like waste of mana for them. It's a waste of mana for you, but hey, you're taking less damage. Viper Sting, the second you see that baby, take it off. That will drain your mana so fast just want to get rid of it the second you see it and if they start spamming it they'll run out of mana too don't worry just make sure you get it off yourself concussive shot now you don't actually want to freedom this because then you'll have to rebuff might it's actually cheaper for you to just dispel it you'll be dispelling a lot against uh hunters especially in world pvp or if you're in pre-mates you'll be dispelling your teammates all the time you got a healer with viper sting they're going to shout at you if you don't dispel them so make sure you dispel that Repentance is also really good for gap closing. Uh, it's you know, six seconds CC, use it, it's got like 30 yard range. You can gap close with that, that's nice. Um, so 20 yard range, sorry. Uh, so that's uh, that's always nice. Druids, now there's not really an aura for druids as you don't have arcane resistance aura and you don't have nature resistance aura. Uh, although it would be nice, we don't. So you're probably going to be using Sanctity Aura as Devotion Aura. They don't really do a lot of damage in Bear, so what's the point really? Just to get Sanctity Aura and try and pressure them to leave Bear form. So it's kind of a, a long long duel against Druids. They're supposed to be able to outlast most classes, but they may not outlast you. Now, how you do this is you slap them in Bear form until they decide, oh shit, I need to heal. Second they jump out, you stun them and you spank them. You spank them hard. If they're kiting you, the second they drop cat form or uh, travel form to moonfire you, repentance them, as you cannot repentance them in form. You can only repentance humanoids. So, repentance them, 
close the gap, kill them. But just one big tip is never stun them in bear form unless you're really pumping out damage and they're low. You want to do it the second they leave to either use nature swiftness or whatnot. You want to catch them on that, kill them before they can pop nature swiftness. Uh, that's really it with druids. Uh, dispel their darts, uh, moonfire and uh, insect swarm. They do a lot of damage. They reduce your hit. Uh, but if they start basing you and using rank ones, you need to suss that out and stop dispelling them uh, because they'll laugh at you. Shamans. Shamans are a very offensive class, complete opposite to paladins, but they have an offensive dispel. So they're going to be dispelling your seals, so you can't judge. They'll be dispelling your buffs, so uh, you do less damage or your freedom or whatnot. So you want to make sure that you're using your rank one uh, buffs or seals and trick them into dispelling them, which costs you literally like 20 mana and costs them like 200 mana. So they're gonna be running out of mana that literally 10 times faster than you are, which means that you are you have the benefit of the fight. If you're against enhancement shamans, you might wanna use devotion aura, but against them, again, you don't have nature resistance aura, would be nice, but no, sanctity aura or devotion aura. Um, they're pretty easy to kill once you stun them. They don't have much survivability. Uh, don't let them cut you with Frost, frost Shock. Uh, dispel it, either with Cleanse or with Freedom. Doesn't matter, your Freedom's gonna get dispelled, so. Uh, but I'm pretty sure the mana cost is very, very similar between the two. 120 mana, 150 mana, so. Whatever flows your goat. Um, but yeah, Shaman's really, it's just a stun and spank. Um, yeah. That's it. Careful for Earthshock. Uh, if you start casting, they have a very short silence cooldown. So they, if you start casting, if you go on the defense against the Shaman, it will probably lose. Make sure you stay on the offense against Shamans. So that's all for 1v1 PvP tips. I know it's a little bit niche. Uh, you can only really use these in duels or tournaments, solo or PvP or that niche 1v1 that you get in the battleground. Uh, I cannot stress to you guys how much Sanctitura is used. It is not used that often. You want to be using it when you stun, and that's about it, really. You don't want to be switching into Sanctitura when you could be eating up spells with your resistance auras. Um, and on top of that, I'm sorry I haven't put out too much content on YouTube. I've been pumping that content ever since I got the server first, Hand of Rag. Uh, check me out on Twitch. It's twitch.tv slash paranoxic. I hope you guys enjoyed the clips and I hope you guys have learned something over anything. I uh, appreciate you guys for watching. Uh, like and subscribe. Leave a comment if you want If you want to ask anything about Rep Palins. I'm a Wikipedia on Rep Palins. Uh, and thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one.